and the diplomatic corps. Representatives of various authorities, civil society, ladies and gentlemen. It is a great pleasure for me to be here, to visit Iraq, a visit that has been a long time coming. I have long wanted to visit the country, a country that is the cradle of civilization, a country that is directly linked to the patriarch Abraham, one of the greatest prophets of salvation, a country with a long-standing religious tradition, one that brings together the three monotheistic religions, Judaism, Christianity and Islam. I wish to extend my heartfelt thanks to the President for the invitation and I wish to thank him for his kind introductory remarks. I wish to thank the remarks on made and I wish to acknowledge all representatives here today from the diplomatic corps and civil society. I welcome religious representatives, bishops and all believers of the Catholic Church. I come here as a pilgrim. I am here to encourage you to further bear witness to your faith. I wish to extend my welcome to all those people who belong to the Christian church, church who belong to Islam and who belong to Judaism as well, to all religions. I wish for all of our religions to walk forward into the future together hand in hand as brothers and sisters. And I call on you all to stay true to the values of faithful, of mutual trust, of fraternity, humanity, of coexistence. My visit comes at a time when the world is seeking together to move on from the current pandemic, the COVID-19 pandemic, which has touched all of us around the world. It is a crisis that has not only affect us, affected us all, but has also deeply thwarted the current economic stability of the world. Certain efforts have been put forward and worked on together, and those efforts were necessary, for example, to be able to have as many people as possible vaccinated against this virus. That said, there is still much more that needs to be done to rethink the way we operate, to rethink our place in this world. We need to be able to come out of this crisis stronger and better. It is about building a future, one that is based on that which unites us, not divides us. We must free ourselves from conflict, war, terrorism. We must free ourselves from what extremists would have because they believe that division is the only way forward. But when we recognize our differences, we can move forward because divisiveness has caused so much war, has caused so much death. And why we still feel the scars of those crises, of that violence. When we think of all of those communities who were hard hit and who will take years, if not decades, to overcome. We need to also recall those people, the Yezidi, innocent people, who fell victim to barbarism, people who were persecuted because of their religious beliefs, people who were persecuted because of their identities. Their very survival was put into question. We need to be able to look at each other to look at our differences, but see that we are all part of the same human race, the same human, same human family. That is how we will be able to rebuild. That is how we will be able to leave future generations a fairer, more human world. When we look at wars based on religious differences, ethnic differences, racial differences, 
We must not forget that these differences are what make up mankind and they go back millennia into our past. Therefore, we need to be able to show to all, not just in the Middle East, but further abroad, that difference and our differences must be put aside so that we can work together harmoniously. When we coexist as brothers and sisters, it means that we can act sincerely. When we uphold fairness and justice, we can move forward. I understand it is not easy to do so. It requires much effort. We have to put aside rivalries and differences and long-standing conflict. And it is hard, but we need to be able to do so, so that we can move forward, because we are all born under one single God. I call on all authorities, all competent authorities, to provide all religious communities the acknowledgement of their existence and the right to protection. I welcome a lot of effort that has already been done in this way to protect these religious communities. And I acknowledge all of the effort that has been done in good faith by many amongst you. Because these people are working to build a society built on fraternity. These are people who strive to build communities that show solidarity. These are people who strive to see the world where they can look at others as if they were brothers and sisters. They put actions to words to fight for justice, to protect the most vulnerable. People who fight against terrorism and, and persecution. They, there are people who fight day in, day out to ensure safety, to ensure that the most vulnerable, the poorest of the world, have the means to break free of the bonds of poverty. These are examples that should just inspire us and others to continue to move forward, to help people in terms of economics, to help people have access to education. Following a crisis, it is not just a matter of rebuilding. We need to rebuild, but we need to do it right, so that all can live in dignity. You can't just move on from a crisis as you moved into it. You need to use these times of crises to improve. And political leaders, diplomats, I call on you to show solidarity, to show that you understand the spirit of fraternity. We need to fight against corruption, but that is not sufficient in and of its own. We also need to ensure that there is justice, to encourage people to live honest lives. Because when that is done, then we can ensure stability. That is when you will be able to have sound policy, so that the young generations, of which there are so many in your country, will have hope for a better future. Mr. President, ladies and gentlemen, I am here as a penitent man. I come begging pardon. I implore the God Almighty to pardon us, mankind, for the war and suffering that we have caused. And I call also on the Prince of Peace to look out for us. My thoughts go out to all of those people in Iraq. 
Pope John Paul II announced when he was Pope a number of initiatives to further the plight of Christians in the Middle East. And I would like to say that God is listening. God always listens. And now we need to listen to him. We need to walk in his footsteps. Be it here or elsewhere in the world, we need to put aside selfish interests, selfish interests that ignore the general population. We need to be the peacemakers so that the more humble generations can work, live and pray in peace. We need to put an end to violence, extremism, factional divisions, intolerance. We need to give a space to all those people who wish to build a future together in this country, in sound dialogue, in honest discussion. We need to give them the opportunity to do so. We need to support those people who seek to find reconciliation those people who are willing to put aside their own personal interests. In these past few years, we have seen that Iraq has strived to lay the foundations of a democratic society. And it is essential that all groups of society, political groups, religious groups, can participate in that, in that building process. And we need to ensure that they can all enjoy their fundamental rights. No one can be considered a second-class citizen. And I would like to welcome all of the progress that has been made in that, in that direction. And I hope that all further measures are going to be done sincerely. And I would also like to mention the international community's role to play in this, in ensuring that the country and the entire region will be able to rebuild in peace. We can see that in, in the region there is ongoing conflict. Syria is one key example, 10 years of ongoing conflict, and therefore we need global cooperation to be able to deal with the issues of economic inequalities that threaten the very stability of this region. I would like to thank countries and international organizations who are working in Iraq on the reconstruction process, who provide assistance to refugees, display internally displaced persons, to support those people who cannot return to their homes. These are people who lack food, water, basic sanitation. I welcome all of the work that seek reconciliation and peace building in the region. I take an opportunity now to recognize the work carried out by all Catholic organizations and agencies over the past few years in the region. And all those organizations who have worked with civil society to be, help those people, the needy, have access to the most basic needs. And they do so with charity in their hearts. And I hope this work will continue in the future. I sincerely hope that countries of the world will not take away the generous hand now at a time when Iraq still needs it, that they will continue to give, that they will continue to support local initiatives. By the very nature of our religion, we need to serve peace and fraternity in the name of the Lord, our Father. We cannot use the Holy Word to justify murder and oppression. On the contrary, God created man as equals, equals in terms of both dignity and rights. And therefore, we need to disseminate his love, his mercy around the world, not just within the Catholic Church, 
but beyond. But in, through dialogue, we will be able to work together to construct a future with the other religions, a future based in peace. Having Christians on this earth, having Christians in this country, it is testament to a long-standing legacy, a long-standing history. They have been part of the past and they will be part of the present. Christian citizens have a right, a right and responsibility to be able to enjoy their faith. And it is part and parcel of having a multi-ethnic, multi-religious country. Dear friends, I would like to take this opportunity once again to extend my gratitude to you for all you have done, for all you have done to help build a society based on, based on common dialogue, peace and fraternity. It is a noble cause I sincerely hope that you will be able to be guided by wisdom, by fairness and sincerity. I sincerely hope that each and every one of you, your families, for each individual, will be able to feel the blessing of God. Thank you very much.